Welcome to another amazing accounting video and today accounting 1 June 2015 um, so that's the most recent paper that I could find um, so yeah um, firstly before I get into all the details um, I know I haven't uploaded anything for six months um, I've just been way too busy and apologies for not replying to many emails either um, I'm not a teacher as some people seem to think I am I'm just a student so anyway, essentially, um, because of my absence for six months, I'm just going back to a simple question paper, and then hopefully we can do some ACM three, ACM four papers um, when I've got my knowledge a bit better, because I've not been doing it for six months. Um, so might as well start off easy. So essentially, in this question, we're just given a, a balance sheet. It's all muddled up. A load of additional information. Um, apply the additional information to the numbers. Rearrange the numbers into the right place. We all know how a balance sheet should be uh, structured and then um, hopefully it balances because it's a balance sheet I guess. Um, so uh, Lee Crosby buys and sells uh, cookery equipment, he's tried to make a balance sheet, he can't do it so he's given a load of students to it to do it. Uh, we've got a suspense pa account of 10k, ignore that, don't panic about that yet. Um, fix the balance sheet essentially, <laughs> it's as simple as that. So um, working one. During the year, cookery equipment purchased for resale. So remember, we are buying and selling cookery equipment. We are not uh, buying cookery equipment as a asset, it's, uh, as a non-current asset, I should say, to be correct. Uh, that had a cost of three thousand five hundred has been entered into in error into the shop fittings account. So we've inflated our shop fittings account. If you want to put it as sim uh, simply. Um, so yes. So what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to take the shop for inks figure that we've got and we've overstated that by 3,500 so we come down to 34,500 simple so we've got one side of the transaction we've lowered our non-current assets the top half of our balance sheet but how are we going to make it now um, equal itself how are we going to make this balance because obviously a trial balance has to equal zero has to equal its debits and credits and trial balance have to equal each other or else your balance sheet isn't going to balance it's as simple as that so we decreased on our top half of our balance sheet how are we going to decrease the bottom or increase the top half so it nets to zero essentially well we've had purchases and we've put them in as a non-current asset therefore we've emitted them from our purchases surely so this is obviously going to affect our profit figure so it was 52,423 I've just taken that from the bottom here. So we've understated our purchases. So we need to increase our purchases, which is going to increase our cost of sales, which is going to increase our costs overall on the income statement. So profit comes down by the perfect amount of 3,500, bringing us to 48,923. So essentially what happens there is purchases go up, uh, cost of sales go up. So obviously profit goes down. Easy. So Lee believes the shop fittings, so we're still in the shop fittings situation. He believes the shop fittings have an economic life of five years and have an estimated residual value of 2k. So what does that mean? It means after five years of depreciating it, we're gonna they're gonna be worth two thousand pounds to the business. So we have cost equaling thirty four five hundred and a residual equaling 2k. So we need to depreciate guess what over five years. How, how much do we need? We just need to get from there to there in five years. So it's x minus y 32,500. Easy peasy. So what's the depreciation each year? Well, very easy. It's just 32 500 over 5 years gives me 6,500. What's that 6,500? It's depreciation. What is depreciation? It's an expense. What does an expense do? It decreases profit. Can you see this domino effect? The depreciation. Depreciation is an expense. Expense goes against profit. Profit goes down. It's just this domino effect. And once you get that into your head, uh, it makes linking things up so much easier. So we've got our original profit figure that we calculated in W1. 
Let's take away the 6,500, which gives me 42, 423. So we've decreased the bottom half of our balance sheet. How are we going to net this off at the top? Well, we've not accounted for this depreciation in our asset figure, have we? So the net book value of our shop fittings has decreased. The cost is 34500 Take away this depreciation charge, and the new net book value is 28 k So bottom half has come down by 6500 in the profit, the net book value in the top half of the balance sheet has gone down by 6500 Trial balance is going to equal itself, isn't it? Debit equals credit. Easy. So, W3, very easy one. The property should be depreciated by 5% using the straight line method. So, depreciation, let's split that out first, because that's what knocks on into other things. So, it's straight line, where's our property in here? Under current assets, obviously wrong. <laughs> So, 108,000 times by 5%, or divided by 20, however way you want to think of it. That's an expense, as I said earlier. See, these two are just exactly the same thing in a way. So, it's just it's the same treatment as W2. It's just the profit's going to get hit by this extra expense, isn't it? So, 42, 423. So, I'm just taking the profit figure from there. Taking away 5,400 to give me 37,023, and it's the same thing again. Just net book value is going to get we're going to get hit, isn't it? We've not adjusted for this um, depreciation yet. So 108,000 to take away. Guess what? 5,400 equals 102,600. Easy. So W2 and W3. If you get the if you get the idea for one, you're just going to get it for the other straight away, aren't you? W4, we have withdrawn £70, £75 in cash, so drawings straight away, that's quite easy to see. From the business, for its personal, own personal use, it's not been accounted for. So, it's obviously drawings, isn't it? It's as simple as that, there's no more explanation behind it. So, drawings were 71201, and we've increased our drawings. Don't subtract it. And that's just going to give us 71. 276. So what's the opposite to this? Well we've increased our drawings in the business but the cash in the business has decreased hasn't it because cash has left the business. So cash, not bank, cash in hand. This is the one. We, Lee has withdrawn £75 in cash so um, take it as that. So 155 take away 75 equals 80. So that'll be a current asset, easy. W5, a credit customer has ceased trading owing Lee some money that will never be received. What's that? That's a bad debt, we all know that. So bad debt equaling 1040, what's that? It's an expense. What does an expense do? It decreases profit. You see again how this domino effect works. So profit, take my latest profit figure, which is this 37, 023 take away to 1040 and we're going to get 35983 easy so what, what does a bad debt do on our balance sheet well someone who owed us money now can't give us that money they don't owe us the money anymore essentially so our trade receivables have to go down don't they I'm just going to abbreviate receivables so we get 37.40 there. So take away 104. And it's as simple as that. Profit decreases, trade receivables decrease. It's a bad thing. Someone who owes us money can't give us money. Okay, so W6. So this is where the suspense account is going to come into play. The wages account has been overstated by £10,000. Okay, so. We've overstated our wages, which means what? Well, we've overstated our expenses, which means we've put too many expenses in our income statement. So we're going to take that original, well, we're going to take that n latest profit figure, we're going to add 10k. We've overstated our expenses, therefore we've got more profit than we thought we had. 
It almost brings into question why on earth you've made an income statement because it seems like every single figure in it he's got wrong in a sense. But you know, it's one of them ways that the exam board want to test you. They want to see does that does that get back that boy or that girl understand that this affects profit? This affects the income statement. So yes, and you'll see that all bar one of these actually hit the uh, profit figure. So we've edited the profit by 10k. What's the opposite transaction for this? We've just overstated our wages. Wages. We haven't paid them too much. The amount we've actually paid them as human beings hasn't changed. It's not wrong. It's just we've overstated it in our accounts. And we can't find an opposite transaction to this. Therefore, suspense is solved. So we can just that 10k earlier on here. This 10k here. We can just ignore it now. We, we've solved it. We found that, that 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 debit or that credit that we couldn't previously find. Simple as that. So, and the final working. A credit supplier has issued a credit note of fifty-five pounds for goods. So, supplier. They are supplying us goods. It is not a customer. So they've been damaged, and it's not been entered into the books. So we can assume the original purchase that we, when we bought the goods, has been made, has been put into the accounts. But it's just this return hasn't been put in. So let's just explain this a bit better. So a supplier. So what's a supplier related to in our business? It's related to purchases. And what's the what counteracts purchases for us? It's returns, not in, but out. Customers return in. Us as a business return out to our supplier. It goes back up the chain essentially. And these are subtracted from guess what? Cost of sales. So we are what we're subtracting from cost of sales. So our cost of sales goes down, therefore our profit goes up. So our profit now is simply latest profit figure forty five nine eight three. And then we're going to add on £55. It's going to bring us to 46038. Lovely. So, what's the opposite transaction to this? We, 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 we've returned some goods out. We've got our money back. We're going to get our money back for it. Because we don't own the goods, we've not sold them. Well, it's actually the second word in the point a credit supplier. We used to owe them some money because we bought these goods off them, but now we're returning them back to them, so we don't owe them the money anymore. Therefore, our trade payables surely decrease, don't they? So where's our trade payables? Four two two zero. I'm just going to take away fifty five. We don't owe them the money for these goods anymore. They have them back. Easy as that, isn't it? So there's all your workings. Now let's just put the balance sheet together. So I prepared this like some Saturday Kitchen uh, episode where half of it's already done for you. So I've just outlined the skeleton really. Um, you still need to fill it with the meat and the bones to get the uh, the correct answer, as it were. So our two non-current assets we have dealt with. So property and the other one was what shop fittings was to. So just to help your guys' references, uh, property was W3 and shop fittings was W2 and W1, but mostly W2, and W1 fed into W2. So what was our property figure? Net book value, 102,600. What was our shop fittings figure? 28,000 exactly. Yeah. So 13600. So it's just easy having all these workings here because it just feeds this perfectly. There's no more equations to be done except when you're doing net current assets, but that's the easiest equation in the world. It's just putting these figures here into here. Um, so, yes, yeah, so inventory, current assets. What else do we have? Well, we hit our trade receivable in working five with that bad debt, didn't we? Let's go for free payments. We've not touched that, but it's still we speed there. Uh, bank, 
we discussed that with the drawings point that was also mentioned in W4. So, so three of these current assets have not been touched by us in our workings. Um, so where's our inventory? There we go. 31517. Trade receivables fell to 2,700 pounds because of our uh, bad debt. Prepayment 225. Bank 2140. And the cash we hit in W4 because of our drawings, well, uh, 80. So when I'm talking through this, I'm always saying it from a first person point of view. I'm sort of putting myself in Lee's shoes, and I find that a lot easier. Uh, so when I say I've withdrawn cash, cash, I do mean Lee, but I think it makes it a lot easier when you, you put it into that perspe perspective, in a way. So that brings you to 36662. I'm not a genius mathematician. I do have this all written down um, prior. Um, so don't worry. So we have trade payables, which we hit in W7 because of that credit now, and then the reverse of prepay prepayments, accruals, uh, trade payables fell to 4165. So right now this is just manual input, it's, it's nothing uh, straining in any way, you know you've done all the hard work, just, just put numbers in correct now. Net current assets, so current assets take away current liabilities, 32337. We've got a loan which has been untouched completely, uh, 52k. So they could have had, it could have been a debenture, and it could have had an interest figure against it to make it a bit more tricky. But they didn't. Uh, net assets. So we're going to do this. Add that. Take that. One one zero nine three seven. So I'm just going to do that just to make it look obvious. Capital. I have not touched once. 136175. Profit for the year. What was the final profit figure? 46038. And then our drawings figure, where do we get that? We withdrew some cash, so it's come up to 71276. Don't forget to subtract that. It's the opposite of capital. Capital is putting money into the business. Drawings taking money out of the business. So 110937. And it balances. Great. Um, so I hope that's helped. Um, if you ever have any questions, please email me. I'll try my best to respond to everything, um, but I don't have time most of the time. Um, I will try and do some more uploads and make it a bit more regular and hopefully do some more difficult questions than this. But um, in the meanwhile, um, have a nice day, and I'll see you all later.